Greetings from Kenwall. Today is Monday, January the 1st, 2024. Today is a new year and a new life can be yours. You know, in the last number of videos, I have shown that evolution, as shown in most textbooks, is nonsense. When you look at it, if scientists in a sterile laboratory cannot make the first cell, then there is no way, I like to say by random, unguided chance that the first cell came from inorganic materials, you know, by simply that burst of lightning striking it. And no first cell, no evolution. Yet, with all the evidence coming out against evolution, still almost every university professor will continue to defend their religion of evolution. Now, I would strongly recommend that you take a look at this video that I have shown over here on my right. You know, it's all about the inner workings of the cell. I like to say that the cell is the epitome of a factory. In fact, every cell is more efficient than any man-made factory. To stay alive and function properly, cells have a division of labor similar to that found in factories. You know, when you watch this video, you will quickly see that the cell is so incredibly complex that there is no way, I love the term, by random, unguided chance that it could ever have formed from inorganic materials. And not only that, but over the last 20 years, scientists have been finding out all sorts of new information about the cell that they never knew before. Richard Dawkins, you know, he is by far one of the most famous atheists. You know, he will defend his religion of evolution to his death. He, you know, he's very sincere in his faith, and I love what he said. It is absolutely safe to say that if you meet someone who claims not to believe in evolution, that person is ignorant, stupid, or insane. And he put it in brackets, or wicked, but I'd rather not consider that. You know, I love that quote, and I keep thinking to myself, which one of those categories do I fall in? You know, I also, you know, I wonder how can one be wicked by simply believing um, in, by not believing in evolution? You know, a long time ago, I took my first course in dissectional human anatomy. And I was told during the first week of classes, the sooner that you believe that evolution is a fact, the better off you're going to be in this program. You know, yet, I didn't see any evidence of evolution. All I saw was a human body that is so wonderfully made. You know, I realized that there is no way, <laughs> I like to say, there is no way in God's green earth that the human body came together by the so-called random, unguided chance without any man directing it. Here, to my right, is a diagram of our hand and wrist. You know, when I do the simple action of clenching my fist, you know, all the bones have to be perfectly aligned. I have just the right number of muscles, nerves, and tendons in order to make everything work perfectly. And so far, man cannot make a perfect prosthetic hand, as it still has so many limitations. Well, just like the engineer who created this prosthetic hand, our hand implies that there is an intelligent designer at work. When evolution say that all this happened by random, unguided chance, it, it truly takes a whole lot more faith to believe that than believing that God marvelously made us. I want to tell you one comical thing that happened in my anatomy class a long time ago. You know, one day we were examining a whole, examining a whole bunch of bones and we were looking at what the, the origin and insertion of all these bones. And I looked over and here was one of my fellow students named Jane. She was intently concentrating, looking at these bones, but at the same time, she had this small human bone in her left hand and she was gnawing away on it. 
I jabbed my friend beside me and said, you know, take a look at Jane. And we started laughing at this. So I said to her, I said, Jane, are you enjoying gnawing on that bone? <laughs> and when she realized what she'd been doing, she scrunched up her face and she said, oh, that's gross. You know, it's amazing what one can do when you're in La La Land. Well, today I would look at, I would like to look at what the fossil record shows. You know, contrary to what most evolutionists believe, the fossil record shows that life appeared suddenly without any transitional fossils. This happened in what is called the Cambrian Explosion. According to evolutionists, the Cambrian Explosion is a time period between 541 million and approximately 530 million years ago, where there is this unparalleled emergence, emergence of organism. You know, the picture in my right shows Darwin's tree of life. You know, it started from that one single cell and over millions of years, it branched out into all the different life forms. And if I had extend, extended this tree of life, we would eventually get to humans and all other life forms. Now, if this tree of life is true, then there would be millions of fossils found showing that the evolution of all forms of life. But this is definitely not the case. From the fossil record, the tree of life looks like this. The data is not supporting evolution. We have had 164 years since Darwin wrote his Origin of Species. And with all that time, there had been no transitional fossils found before the Cambrian explosion. In fact, I love this. In 1990, sorry, 1985, Time magazine called this evolution's Big Bang. This event is so significant that it made the front cover of Time. You know, in the article, one paleontologist said this. What I would like to ask my evolutionary biologist friends is this. How much faster does this event have to happen before we stop calling it evolution? You know, here is a picture of what the data shows and what the theory says. You know, anyone looking at this sees that something spectacular happened in the Cambrian explosion. Occam's razor says that the simplest explanation is usually the right one. In regards to the Cambrian explosion, the simplest explanation is that an intelligent designer, i.e. God, created all of life. It's hard to get a better explanation than that. Once again, Richard Dawkins, he said about this, we don't need fossils. The case for evolution is watertight without them. So it is paradoxical to use gaps in the fossil record as though they were evidence against evolution. You know, Dawkins, he will never admit that the evidence from the fossils supports a creator. He is so grounded in his evolutionary religion that he will never go against it. Yet the data does not support what he believes. So I ask you the question, what do you believe? Do you believe in evolution and no God? This faith does not give us any hope whatsoever. It only means basically we have a pitiful life and that upon death, that is all there is. You know, it is no wonder that here in Ontario, in all of Canada, mental health is in a crisis situation and is reaching a breaking point as a result of the pandemic. In fact, in 2023, more than 5 million people in Canada met the diagnostic criteria for a mood, anxiety, or substance use disorder. With the prevalence of mood and anxiety disorders increasingly increasing substantially over the previous 10 years. There is indeed a solution, and that is putting your faith in Jesus Christ. He is the hope for your future. He will never let you down. When you do this, start attending a Bible-believing church. 
then you will find the best support group out there that you will ever come across. Today is the start of 2024. How about starting it off on the right track with Jesus Christ, who I'd love to say he will change your life forever for the better. Happy New Year 